Beep. One of my favorite songs by Train That Chase is on. Okay, so separate piece of paper. This one is an exponent raised to another exponent. Mr. H, what does that mean? Well, that means, here's our example that you might want to have on a separate piece of paper. If we've got three squared raised to the fifth, what does that mean? Well, that truly means that we have three multiplied by three. That's what three squared is. Well, if three times three is raised to the fifth, how many times do I have that product of three multiplied by three? Well, five times. So there's time one, there's times two, there's time three, there's time four, there's time five. So it's raised to the second power, which is what I have, three multiplied by three. And then it's raised to the fifth power. So five times two is 10. How many threes do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's three to the tenth. Wait a minute. All of this is three to the tenth. Another way that I could say this is three multiplied by two times five, which is ten, which I want to add the form of three to the tenth. So when you have an exponent raised to another exponent, you multiply them. Okay? That's what this is saying. So in different words, variables, that is what it's saying. Okay? Not a lot of work today. Today you're turning in your classwork. Okay, so we are going to do exercise one together and then you're on your own. So 15 to the third raised to the ninth really means 15, three times nine, which is 15 to the 27th. Could I prove that? Absolutely, I could write out 15 times 15 times 15, put those in parentheses, and then have that nine times. But I assure you, you're still going to have that nine times, which is 27. I'd like you to do example three and example five. So you're doing this one and this one. Pause me and go. Hey, welcome back. So this truly means three and four tenths, I would put that in parentheses. Okay, I personally put, if it's a decimal, in parentheses, because I want to know that it's not a multiplication problem. I get a little bit confused with that. And then I multiply 17 times four, which gives me three and four tenths to the eight carry the two, should be 68. Number five, Sarah wrote three to the fifth to the seventh equals three to the twelfth. Correct her mistake. What Sarah did, Sarah wrote three to the five plus seven, which this is not, okay? That would have been three to the fifth multiplied by three to the seventh. That's what that is. This is an exponent raised to another exponent. So, it should be three to the five times seven, because there's three, 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 seven times, which then gives me three to the 35th, okay? I like to think that this is very, 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 very easy. Okay, then it says, hey, Let's throw something else new at you. And I love it. Well, let's throw in more than one term inside our grouping symbols. So go back to that piece of paper. So let's say I have three x to the second, y to the fourth, all of that to the fifth power. So again, I could write this out five separate times, but the lesson that we learned last Yesterday, or over the weekend, I don't even know what day it is. Again, it's June 9th to me. Everything has an exponent. So the first time that I see this, even when I have a coefficient, I want to put an exponent with that coefficient. So what exponent is with 3? It's 1. 
So when there's more than one term, what I'm doing now is taking this exponent that it's raised to and multiplying it to every individual exponent. So that means that I have 3, 1 times 5, x, 2 times 5, y, 4 times 5, which leaves me with 3 to the 5th, x to the 10th, y to the 20th. That's what this is saying. You have to take this exponent and distribute it to every exponent, not to the numbers. I didn't do 3 times 5. That's not what I did. I did 3 to the 5 times the first power, 5 times the second power, 5 times the fourth power. We're only taking it to the powers. So how does this look for some examples? Well, let's find out. So first and foremost, 11 times 4. This has an exponent. This has an exponent. So I'm going to take 9 times the exponents. So that gives me 11. 1 times 9 multiplied by 4, 1 times 9, which is 11 to the 9th times 4 to the 9th, okay? I'd like you to do exercise 9 and exercise 10. Go. Ooh, and exercise 12, I lied. Come back, exercise 12, do exercise 12 too, yay! This one's pretty easy. So I distribute it to the exponents. 3, 2 times 5, a, 4 times 5. So that gives me 3 to the 10th multiplied by a to the 20th. That's an easy one. This, on the other hand, we need to know, hey, 5 has an exponent. x has an exponent. So it's 7 times the 1, 7 times the 1. So that's 5, 1 times 7, x, 1 times 7 which is 5 to the 7th, x to the 7th. Same thing holds true here. This is where a lot of you are going to make mistakes. Make sure everything has an exponent. a squared, b to the 1st, c to the 3rd. Now I can multiply. That gives me a to the 8th, 2 times 4. b to the 4th, 4 times 1. c to the 12th, 4 times 3. Last but not least, what happens if it is a fraction? Absolutely nothing. Let x and y be numbers, let n be a positive integer. How is x divided by y related to x to the n, y to the n? So let's say I have this right here. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. I have x to the first power, y to the first power. All of that's raised to the nth power. Well, remember, if I have exponents raised to an exponent, that means I am distributing it to every exponent. Is this the only exponent I have? No. I also have exponents in the denominator. So that gives me x 1 times n divided by y 1 times n. That's x to the 1 times n is n, y to the n. On a separate piece of paper, I'm going to show you one more example. Let's say I have 3x to the second divided by 4y. All of that's raised to the third. Okay, so on your separate piece of paper, you should be doing this. Everything must have an exponent. 3 has an exponent. 4 has an exponent. Y has an exponent. And distribute just to the exponents. So that's 3. 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 1 times 3 is 3, 3 times 1 is 3. Could we simplify that further? Yeah, I could do 3 to the 3rd, I could do 4 to the 3rd, and actually get whole numbers, but right now we're going to keep it an exponential. So, now that you're done with this, there is no homework. You are turning in the exit ticket. There are five questions, you are doing all five, turn them in. It is a classwork grade. It will be graded for correctness. So 
exit tickets on the table, go ahead and grab it.